For two years, our lives have revolved around desert racing. We prep the car, we race the car, we tear the car down, and repeat. It's been a whirlwind ride, that's for sure, with plenty of ups and way too many downs. But we have made some great friends out here racing. Can you drive that thing, you think? That's where we gotta ride for hours and hours. And don't get me wrong, I love off-road racing, and I love competing on the highest level. But sometimes you just need a break. Sometimes we just gotta take a step back and reevaluate. I know it seems like it, but desert racing isn't all that we do. And frankly, we're just getting started. All right, so I'm already late. We gotta pick up Mr. Mal and jump on an airplane to go straight to Canada. We got a crazy trip ahead of us, and we gotta get this thing rolling, so I gotta get out of here. Welcome to Valcourt, Quebec, Canada, where the average yearly snowfall hits around eight feet, and the temperatures can hover around a balmy zero degrees Fahrenheit. How you doing, buddy? Hey, good, yourself? Doing good, man. <laughs> Fortunately, Valcourt is home to BRP and the invention of the snowmobile. This is hugely popular for you guys, right? Yes, this is where we come from. With that being said, there isn't any better place to host the world's most talented skidoo racers. For a weekend of snowcross racing, nice oval track racing. Actually, pretty much anything you can race in the snow. So we're out here at the BRP farm. They're having their 36th annual uh, Grand Prix. It's freezing cold out here, but that's not keeping these guys from running. They're out here about to rip right now. Dustin and Mr. Mal mainly come to Valcourt for meetings with BRP for 2017. But seeing what makes their friends north of the border tick, well, it has them intrigued to say the least. That one dude wiped out hard. It's a good thing to help carry his free here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could race this many things in ice and snow. This is Canada's mud racing, man. Just on snowmobiles, four-wheelers, motorcycles. It, it's nuts, man. Snowcross is hugely popular in Canada and is one of the fastest growing sports in America. They have a sight lap and then they start at no, the they gate? Start, they start there. Uh-huh. They're just looking at the track. Gotcha. I can't believe they let us walk right up here by the track. They're fixing a whole shot from here. We're standing at the start line. In theory, snowcross is the distant cousin of short course UTV racing. And Dustin and Mr. Mal are happy to root on their fellow long distance teammates. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Other k and races from different genres, man, it's just cool to get to hang out and meet those guys, see how they run their programs, and uh, encourage them, man. Man, that was wild. And these dudes get down on some snowmobiles. The exhibition may seem like it's all about racing for glory, but the weekend is incredibly important to BRP and their product development team. That's exciting that you guys all come out here and watch the races. Racing means a lot for us. Yes. So we're learning on the racetrack, going on the production units. No doubt, pushing the limits of technology is the driving force behind racing for both UTVs and snowmobiles. A strong machine on the race course translates into a great recreational ride. And Dustin and Mr. Mal get to experience it firsthand. It's like the third day. First time on a snowmobile ever. And I feel like this is probably not gonna turn out good. 800 cc or 850, roughly 160 horsepower. We're going to the Lake Brompton, really fun, short. We're going to go through the countryside. Something about getting on a lake and going fast, so that appeals to me. It's about six miles long and 12 inches of ice, so it's very safe, very fun. Well, I've got a proper wheelie. This is going to be sweet for sure. I feel like I've reached level 100 already. I had a good teacher, Jia, showed me a couple times. I got it. Now that Dustin has mastered the art of snowmobile wheelies, where's he going? It's time for him to move on to a little more complex maneuver, the sacred dance between a man and his snowmobile. It's your first time. You turn right, you lean left, and then you, you drive smooth. Like a dance. You dance with the sled. And Dustin is a natural. There you go. Got it? That's uh, pretty good. <laughs> He busted his fanny up here. Yeah, it makes it look really easy. He did it a minute ago like no problem. He makes it look easy. But as they say, to succeed, one must fail. And eventually, Dustin gets the hang of it. Well, kind of. Uh, it's just kids playing and having fun. And Dustin is always the same, 17 years old. 
I mean, it's so cool to get out here with the guys from Can-Am. It's cut loose, man. Have a little bit of fun. To say the least, the short trip to Quebec, Canada was an eye-opening experience for Dustin and Mr. Mount. You know, every good to do something like this, man. You know, just free ride, no racing, just hang out. With the Mint 400 merely weeks away, they need to get back to Shreveport for final vehicle prep. But first, Dustin needs to make a stop in Reno for the Maverick X3 Max release. All right, he's coming. He'll stand right here, so he'll walk right past the sign towards y'all. You know what I mean? And Dustin wants to make an entrance. Whenever he starts coming, like wave at him, like, what's up, man? So Phil Henderson's fixing to come downstairs, and uh, we're gonna give him a little surprise. <laughs> Scare you a little bit? <laughs> we had this whole elaborate plan, like, yeah, we're getting this guy. Guys <laughs> Come on down, Phil. BRP Marketing asked Dustin to host the live feed for the evening's unveil. A lot better looking back then. Way better looking. Dude, what happened since then? And as a host, you get to check out the new equipment before the doors open. As you can see, this one's fully accessorized with uh, the link system, the sound system on there. It's pretty bad to the bone. Wasn't that you telling me that this was your favorite one at the show? I think we're sure. Hands down, my favorite one. I think we're sure I remember that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this feels good. And of course, they check out the new Maverick X3 Max. Ah, I think this is the one that was actually on photo shoot with you. Is it really? I think it is, yeah. Dude, this is the one we were chucking like 20 yeah. foot in the video, man. But, so a couple times a year, we'll introduce new products based on seasonality. And we have a whole team dedicated to shows and events at VRP. And they put this, these crazy shows together to kind of introduce these products to our dealer network. So it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah, that feels good. It's really exciting for us, man. We like doing these things. We like being involved with them. But they got some really cool stuff coming out for the ski do line, as well as the off-road line, which is what we're excited about. So we're gonna go shower up, man, get ready, come back down here, watch the unveil, and then run back over here. So we're here ready to do live feed when everybody comes in, man. In the power sports industry, BRP is creating shockwaves. BRP hosts two club shows a year, and without a question, they go big. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to see the latest addition to the Can-Am family? All right. With the unveiling of the Maverick X3 Max, BRP introduces the fastest four-seater side-by-side on the market. So this year, the all-new Can-Am Maverick X3 Max. 20 seconds. And Dustin is ready to go live. I don't know that I want to talk a whole bunch in the intro besides a couple of little high points. Yeah. And naturally, yeah. I'm going to bring you straight in. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? This is Dustin Jones with S3 Power Sports. We're at the 2018 Can-Am Dealer Show right now. The new Maverick X3 Max marks the beginning of an optimistic year in off-road for Can-Am and for S3. So the cool thing that we get to do at S3 is we get to see the custom side of stuff. With the release going off without a hitch. So that's a walk around of the, uh, the Maverick Max X3. And remember, every time you get a chance, there's no lift shift on the weekends. Well, according to plan, so you can't ask for more than what just happened. These guys are great speakers. You can ask for a better outcome. Right? Cool. Thanks. Absolutely, man. Thank you, guys. We knocked out the unveil. We knocked out the live feed. And so we got to be on an airplane at about three hours, four yeah. hours, something like that. We got to get out of here and get some sleep, man. We'll be down. Overall, flying across the U.S. from Canada to Reno was a great time. We always meet some interesting people, and for just a little while, we get to be kids again and play in the snow. But honestly, there isn't anything like coming back home, especially during this time of the year, because the end of February means one thing. The Mint 400 is only a few days away. Excited. First time for the Mint 400, so loading the cars, getting the trailers ready, getting the trucks ready, make sure we are ready to roll out in the morning, ready to rock. And for the 2017 season, Mr. Mao is jumping back in the race car. There'll be 108 UTVs, largest class in the whole Mint 400. It's a new record. Yeah, get him score. For me, this is the third year to race the Mint 400. And I won the pro UTV class my first year. And well, last year, we crashed out. But either way, anytime we step in the desert, our plan is to push hard, run for the front, and try to get on the boxes. Or at the very least, give them boys a run for their money. On the next episode of Visions of Victory.
Ready to go to Vegas for the Mint 400, man. Only the biggest off-road race in the country. That's all. Bam! Uh, I'm happy to finally get here. It's been a long road getting the car ready after the Barker. There's over 100 UTVs racing today, and my prediction is there's not going to be more than 60% left after that first lap. Get him with a horn. Man, I'm nervous, dude. We had a bad run last year at the Mint 400. Yeah, I'm antsy. I'm ready to get back in that thing and do it again. I just want to come out here and have a good, clean race in this new X3. What is that? Yeah, dog. I'm fixing to throw down some Jim Connor right here in, uh, what are we, in Bromont? In a rental. We're hanging out trackside watching these guys uh, race. Jimmy John's over there just racking off the fat pipe. We're over here trying to do interviews and they won't shut them down. Shut it down! <laughs> Are those Sasquatch gloves? There you go. Now they're racing. <laughs> I cannot blame it on Dustin this time. <laughs> Where are they going, Josh? Huh? That was quite the sequence. What's happening? <laughs>